Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Um, over the last couple of weeks I've had uh, a number of interesting conversations on Facebook Messenger or through uh, Instagram DM with a number of you guys who uh, have been talking about their recessive projects and even double recessive projects and what I thought I'd do today was to um, uh, describe some of my double recessive projects. I have a number of them. Remember here in Malaysia um, many of our double recessive projects we're going to have to start from scratch. Uh, so I did bring in some uh, Desert Ghosts from Justin Kabelka and uh, I'll be putting those to clowns uh, to make double het Desert Ghost clowns. Desert Ghost in clown is phenomenal. Um, all sorts of different combinations there that I want to get Desert Ghost into. I also have uh, Exanthic clown uh, projects. Uh, that is the VPI line of Exanthic and the Albino Clown project. So a number of uh, double recessive projects. So I just want to talk through uh, with you guys how I manage the projects, how, how I look at things in terms of the various phases, what I'm going to breed to what, how I plan it, um, how I uh, try to uh, minimise the amount of time that's involved, increase the probabilities of getting the right combinations that I need, and also, of course, control costs. If you're buying into a project, uh, you don't need, necessarily need to start at the original visual to visual pairing, although it is very satisfying when you do that. And I know many of you guys are buying visuals, which are het for the other recessive gene. Um, so that will be like buying in at phase three that I'm going to talk about here. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, you guys have the advantage of being able to do that. In most cases here in Malaysia, we don't. We have to make our own. So that's the reason that I'm starting from ground zero with phase one. Uh, don't feel I'm being elitist or uh, that uh, uh, I think everybody should do it that way. I don't. It's just that here in Malaysia we don't have an option and we have to do it that way. So I'm going to walk you through the phase one and phase two projects because I find it interesting to uh, think of projects in those terms. Uh, before I do that, a couple of quick uh, sticker shout outs here from uh, Brian at uh, Golden Constrictors sent me the uh, golden constrictor sticker there thanks Brian and Chad from hyperspace reptiles uh, some interesting conversations with Chad he's got some excellent clown projects in the pipeline so uh, thanks Chad for the sticker there hyperspace reptiles give these guys a follow on Instagram or Facebook okay guys so uh, let's get into it now this is a Desert Ghost, Pastel Desert Ghost Yellow Belly. It's a female, so I can use her in my Desert Ghost projects. Um, and my Justin Kabelka imports, we also brought in a Desert Ghost Yellow Belly female. And the male that uh, I haven't shown yet because uh, he got an infection and is being treated. Uh, but I do have this female available at least for the time being. This is a loner actually from uh, the Scales artist and we'll go back to uh, Rizal at some stage but uh, for now uh, she's in my collection and I can work with her. So this is a pastel yellow belly desert ghost female and the male for the project is none other than my fire clown male. I do want fire into my Desert Ghost projects, my Clown Desert Ghost projects. So this would be a, a nice male to put with that female. So this is a little male VPI Exanthic. Uh, we'll come back to this little guy because actually he uh, he is a het. But to, just to give you a an impression of the uh, starting blocks, this is a male. VPI Exanthic. So this is phase one guys on my genetic calculator. Anybody that's followed my genetic series will know that I like to keep things very simple and I like to use visual aids. So here we've got our phase one which is our visual, in this case a visual Exanthic paired to a visual clown. So it uh, doesn't matter for this purpose which is the male and which is the female but on the left this side we have the male and he is a visual exanthic and as we've done before uh, the male provides half the genetic material 
uh, for, the, for each offspring and in this case it doesn't matter which half you choose each half contains one copy of the exanthic gene so all the offspring will carry one copy of the exanthic gene these will not be visual exanthics they are het for exanthic uh, you'll note that only in the case where we get two of the genes in one square do we actually get a visual so in this case everything is het for exanthic and here is the female who is a clown and again she supplies 50% of the genetic material to her offspring and it doesn't matter which half we choose they both have one copy of the clown gene so all her offspring are het for clown so all of these offspring are going to be double het uh, they're double het for exanthic and for clown so that's phase one uh, that's the initial pairing um, it works equally well for any recessive gene. Uh, in my case, I'm going to be doing a desert ghost to a clown. I have a desert ghost clown project, double recessive project. I have an albino clown project. And, of course, the dreamsicle is the uh, classic uh, double recessive project. The, the dreamsicle being the lavender pied. And phase one is the same for all of these projects at some stage somebody somewhere sometime and it could have been years ago in your country has had to pair the original visual to visual to get the double het recessives um, in malaysia um, awin has done the double het exanthic clowns so I was able to jump into the project at the double het stage in phase two which we'll go on to um, he's also managed to produce a an albino clown um, but apart from that in Malaysia there are no visual double recessives that I know of uh, so we have to start from scratch uh, even though in most of your countries you will have the option to be able to buy visual recessives that are het for the other recessive you need for your project in Malaysia that's not the case in many cases we have to start from scratch and that's why I'm showing you phase one phase one is the original pairing visual to visual to produce the double hets in this case it's exanthic clown double hets for my project now you'll notice on the chart that I have only included the genetics for the two recessive genes and if you're going to do these projects and you're going to start from ground zero at phase one by doing the original pairing it's important to think about what other genes you want in your project uh, by that i mean for instance my exanthic clown i simply want an exanthic clown i do not want any other genes in there i just want the pure exanthic clown perhaps i'd like to add fire at some stage um, but I'll use my Desert Ghost Clown project as a better example. Um, in this case, if we're pairing the original Desert Ghost to the original Clown, I also would like to get Vanilla, Leopard, uh, Yellow Belly, Orange Dream, a number of other genes into the project that I want to work with down the line. So in the first generation of Hets, I'm going to produce a bunch of Hets with different codominant genes associated with them so I can pick the hets that best represent what I'm trying to achieve long term if you do not put the codominant genes into the project at this stage you will either end up having to buy hets that have the genes you need in them or you will end up having to do another round of hets in order to get those codominant genes into your project in this particular case, my clowns already have uh, vanilla, yellow belly, and all the other genes that I want associated with the project, spot nose. They're already into my clowns, but unless I use that clown with those genes in to make my hets for my double het project, that clown with all the genes in it is going to be no good down the line in my double het project because that original clown does not carry the recessive gene for the other recessive that I want into the project. So it's very important right up front to put as many codominant genes as you think you're going to need in your project 
into that first pairing. So in my case, because I'm starting from scratch and doing the Desert Ghost to Clown, I will include Fire, Vanilla, uh, Spot Nose, Yellow Belly, and anything else that, uh, that I think I'm going to need down the line. I will include that in my first round of heads, which could mean that my initial pairing is not just one pair. It could be two pairs. I might pair a male desert ghost to two female clowns in order to get a combination of hats that I need with the right co-dominant genes to further the project. So very important at this stage, especially if you're doing it yourself, is to include as many co-dominant genes in that first initial pairing as you possibly can so that your hats contain those genes in some combination or other and you can pick the hats that you need for the various directions that the project is going to go in in phase two and phase three. For those of you that uh, live in countries that are uh, already are well progressed down the line of projects, dreamsicles are readily available. Of course you can buy the finished product, you can buy a finished dreamsicle. Uh, you can't buy one here in Malaysia but in the States or the UK I'm sure you can. Or you can buy a lavender het pied or a pied het lavender, mix the two and very quickly get your dreamsicle. Um, and if it means here in Malaysia that I have to go all the way back to square one and start with the initial phase one pairing of the visual to visual, uh, the uh, clown to the desert ghost or the clown to the exanthic, um, that's all the more fun for me. It's never been done here in Malaysia, I've never done it, uh, and it's, it gives me a lot of satisfaction to try. Um, so for those of you that want to shortcut or uh, wish to cut down the time or decrease the risk, we'll talk about that as we progress through the different phases, phase two and phase three. So once you reach the uh, het stage, you paired your visual exanthic to your visual clown, uh, you're going to produce a bunch of these guys. Now this is a female, but hopefully you'll have a mix. Now this is a female het exanthic het clown. And actually this girl is a possible het exanthic, possible het clown, rather than 100%. She's yet to be proved out. Uh, but visually, you can see that she is very, very dark. If I was a gambling man, I'd just, I would say that uh, this girl is certainly het exanthic. Uh, you can usually see that, particularly when you can compare the offspring in the clutch. But um, when you do your initial pairing of visual to visual, you will be producing in the second stage a bunch of hats which will look exactly like this girl here. This is actually where the value is in your project. So this is the double hat that you need in order to progress your project. Take a quick look at this girl here. Uh, this is another double hat. Uh, this time it's an albino clown. So another one of my Double hat project. Uh, this foot girl is bowl hugging, building, and she has been paired to a double hat albino clown male. So here we are at phase two, guys. Uh, this is uh, two to three years later uh, when the results of your visual to visual phase one pairings are mature and they're ready to breed themselves. And in this particular case, we're going to breed the double hat to the double hat. And I'm representing just the recessive genes. I'm not representing the co-dominant genes that you included in phase one uh, to further your project goals. Uh, you'll have to select the hats that you need with those co-dominant genes in them uh, to pair up to get the, uh, the right direction you want to go in. So we're just going to talk about the, uh, the double recessive genes here. So we've got a double het exanthic clown here, male, and we've got a double het exanthic clown female and again from my genetic series you will know that uh, each parent provides half of the genetic material so in this particular case the male is going to provide 50% of his offspring with the exanthic gene and 50% of his offspring with the clown gene and the female is going to do exactly the same 50% of her offspring will carry the exanthic gene 50% of her offspring will carry the clown gene. So what that does when you pair het to het 
is that you get one in four visuals. You'll see that we get one in four visual exanthics in this square here and one in four visual clowns in this square here. So what we're going to get in this clutch is a mixture of visual clowns, visual exanthics and then the other three squares here do not contain visual exanthics or visual clowns but they are possible hets and in this case uh, het to het gives you 66% possible het for clown 66% possible het for exanthic so by removing the one square it leaves us three squares two out of three of which are possibly carrying the exanthic gene so that's where we get 66% pos het so if you have a 1 in 4 chance of a visual exanthic and a 1 in 4 chance of a visual clown when you multiply those odds together as we've done before in previous genetic calculations this is now simple probabilities uh, because each gene acts independently so 1 in 4 times 1 in 4 gives you a 1 in 16 chance of getting the double visual recessive so that would be a visual exanthic clown 1 in 16. So it might be in just one clutch of eggs, which is say 6 to 8 eggs, that you do not actually see a visual double recessive. You do not get your visual exanthic clown in one clutch. It might take you two clutches, it might take you three clutches, or you might be very lucky and you might get two of them in your first clutch. It all depends how the odds work. But in this particular phase, what we're doing is pairing het to het and we have a 1 in 4 chance of getting a visual exanthic a 1 in 4 chance of getting a visual clown a 1 in 16 chance of getting the double recessive exanthic clown so in phase 3 of the project for the exanthic clown you'll end up with a bunch of het for clown, het for exanthic, uh, females and males uh, to mix and match. This is uh, actually from the third generation. Uh, it's one of the het to het pairings that produced this 66% het exanthic, 66% het clown. And from that same pairing this year, uh, this is uh, the next generation, and this is a visual exanthic. So that takes the guesswork out of the exanthic part and this is also 66% possible het clown so if I breed this guy to this girl this is a visual exanthic so if she is het exanthic we will get 50% visual exanthics so that part of the equation is removed better chance of getting at least one of the visuals and the het clown part is the part we need to prove out. So this is stage three of the project and I'm in a position where I can mix and match my hets, pos hets to visuals pos hets. Uh, so everything you do in stage three is to reduce the the risks or increase the probability of hitting your double recessive goal. Okay guys, so finally we arrive at phase three, which is the mix and match stage. This is the really interesting stage. Um, so we've done our head to head pairings and two to three years after that. So we are talking about uh, four or five or even six years after our initial visual to visual pairing to produce the double heads. Um, all that time later, uh, we have our babies from the head to head pairing and now we can start to mix and match. Um, you, you will have seen that from that het to het pairing some of the babies were visuals and 66% pos het for the other. Um, so what we've done for phase 3 is to pick one of those babies that was a visual and in this case it's a visual exanthic and we're going to pair it back to the original double het. So the original double het is on this side carrying one copy of the clown gene and one copy of the exanthic gene and the new guy that we're going to introduce to the mix here is a visual exanthic carrying two copies of the exanthic gene 
but is heterozygous for clown. And in this case, I'm going to assume that it is 100% het for clown uh, rather than 66% het, just so that we can see how that improves our odds. So automatically, when you pair, again, splitting the genetic material in half, because we're using a visual exanthic for one of the parents, automatically everything is going to have at least one copy of the exanthic. So two out of four, or one in two of the babies, is going to be a visual exanthic. The other two are going to be het for exanthic. On the clown side of things it doesn't change because both of them are actually het for clown. So one in four of the babies is a visual clown and two out of three of the babies are het for clown. But you can see now because we've actually got twice as many visual exanthic as we had from our het to het pairing. If you remember our het to het pairing had a one in 16 chance of producing the double visual recessive, the exanthic clown. Because we've used a visual for one of the parents in this pairing, we now have a 50% chance of it being exanthic and a 1 in 4 or 25% chance of it being a clown. So now we've reduced our odds to 1 in 8 or 12.5% of getting that double visual recessive. So everything you do in phase three, when you mix and match, or whether you buy from another breeder uh, and you have access to a visual that's het for the other recessive gene that you need, you will be reducing your overall risk or increasing the probability that you will arrive at your target of a visual double recessive. So in this case what I've done is to pair back one of the visual exanthics, which is, I'm assuming, 100% het for clown, back to the original double het parent, and this time I've got a 1 in 8 chance of seeing the double recessive. So much more likely in this clutch that I am actually going to succeed in my goals and uh, produce the visual double recessive. Okay guys, so that's the, that's the three different phases. Phase one is a necessary evil. You have to do it at some stage, or at least some breeder has had to do it. Once you get your double hets, you can pair them together. And then in phase three, you can take those offspring and start mixing and matching which of those offspring you're going to pair back. But if you choose a visual that's recessive for the other gene, you are halving the odds of actually achieving your double recessive goal. So everything you do in phase three, when you start mixing and matching, or whether you go on Morph Market and you want to buy a, uh, a visual that's het for the other recessive that you need to complete your project, you are increasing the probability or reducing the odds that you will get that double recessive, which is your project goal. Okay, again, I have not included all the co-dominant genes that you put into the project right at the start. If you remember in phase one, I said get as many co-dominant genes as you think you're going to need in your project into the start of the project so that you can play mix and match when you mix your uh, phase two het to het pairings. That gives you even more options when you get to phase three in terms of the other genes that are present. But you're trying to reduce the odds, so you want to take a visual which is het for the other gene, or even a visual for one and a visual for, for the other, both of which are het for the other gene, and you will then decrease your odds to one in four of achieving your goal. So if you do have access to a visual exanthic that's het for clown, and a visual clown that's het for exanthic, you have a one in four chance of achieving your double recessive exanthic clown. Okay, so various ways you can get to the end game. There's various ways that you can reduce the costs or the time investment in order to reach your goal. Uh, but I've simplified what I do here, my process, because I'm starting right from phase one. Uh, so we're looking at at least a six year project, maybe a little bit less if I uh, breed some of the males a little bit quicker. Uh, but that's six years worth of projects and phase three is the one where you start to see the exciting stuff. 
There is the possibility that you could get, reach your double recessive goal in phase two, uh, but the odds really are stacked against you. It's only when you get to phase three, you get some of the het to het pairings uh, offspring to pair back to the original hets that you're going to start to see all the various combinations that you hoped for. So long process guys, double hats are not easy, uh, the odds are stacked against you, um, but it's, it's uh, a simple way of looking at it is actually to break it down into its various phases. So phase one is the original visual to visual pairing, phase two is the het to het pairing, and then phase three is the mix and match phase when you've got offspring from the het to het pairing so you might have visuals that are het for the other you might have any combination of uh, possible hets or visuals there that you can pair back to your double het from phase two and thereby achieve your goal okay so you definitely need to plan it out and think about what you're doing when you're uh, trying to produce double recessives plan ahead get your co-dominant genes that you want into your double recessive projects in early so that you have a selection of hets that you can work with and a combination of co-dominant genes that you can pick and choose from uh, so you can pick the right hets to pair together to get the correct combination with your eventual uh, double recessive visual. Okay guys, I hope you found that uh interesting uh, the way that I look at my projects and how I'm managing my double recessive projects. Uh, just a quick word about uh, Ron Heisenberg from BBM Reptiles. Um, many of you will know him from the Four Horsemen on uh, Richard's Predator BP channel. Uh, Ron unfortunately uh, recently his 18 year old daughter uh, passed away and uh, our condolences and thoughts, prayers go out to uh, Ron in Puerto Rico uh, but I'll put a link into uh, Ron's GoFundMe page for the uh, funeral arrangements for his uh, daughter. Uh, it'd be great guys uh, if you could um, drop him a line, show him a bit of support uh, at this uh, awful time for him and if you can spare uh, just a few dollars every little helps so um, I'll put the link in the description below and uh, thanks for any help that you can be to, uh, to Ron. So that's it guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, there is more in the pipeline. I, uh, I've, I've been uh, progressing with my final piece of the uh, female breeders um, series that I'm working on. Uh, finally, some of my females look like they may be ovulating soon and I want to walk you guys through the uh, behaviors to watch out for as we uh, go up to uh, ovulation and prelay shed. So that's in the pipeline. Um, I'll update you guys on my uh, Justin Kabelka uh, imports. They're all doing fine. They're all eating, showing no signs of uh, uh, any sort of uh, problems at all. Other than, of course, the one that I mentioned, the Desert Ghost Male, which I've not revealed, uh, which is undergoing treatment. And uh, I'll up update you guys uh, at a later date on uh, what's happening with, uh, with that particular snake. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.